Hi, welcome to this week's edition of PHQ, questions from the personality hacker community. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And Addison, let's get right to our question today. Hi, guys. This may be a dumb question, but I was wondering if an INFP, because of the tertiary function of memory, would be a more sensing-oriented pattern seeker or seeing patterns that are a little more tied to sensing than more purely abstract pattern seeking than an ENFP. And would an ISFP be more pattern-seeking sensor than more purely sensory detail-driven than an ESFP? Likewise, would an ENTP have their tertiary harmony influence how their thinking decisions present outwardly more than an INTP would? Or vice versa, would an INTP be a more sensing-influenced intuitor than more purely abstract pattern-driven like an ENTP? I mean this in the idea of subtle differences in the degrees of the influences of the tertiary functions on the co-pilot. In other words, would the 10-year-old functions give a little more influence to the expression or flavor of the co-pilot? I know the 3-year-old can totally mess things up, but can the 10-year-old influence the skill and approach and expression of the co-pilot in any useful way at all? Are there graduations like this depending on the second and third functions? I read somewhere that ISFPs are the most intuitive sensors and that INFPs, like J.R.R. Tolkien, can put a lot of sensory details into their intuitively driven stories. I know you have been talking a lot about how the tertiary function can confuse self-typing lately, because you can get stuck unhealthily in the tertiary. I'm asking a bit of a different question. I hope I am making sense. Thanks from one of our listeners. Hey, thanks for the question. So what I'm understanding you, you're asking, and again, this person that, that wrote in and asked this question has invested in some programs and has a little bit more understanding of this. She's part of the, the inner tribe of Personality Hacker. So this is a little more of a technical question. And if you're looking at the car model that you'd get with your personality profile, you would see there's a 10-year-old position that the question here is, does that 10-year-old position, whatever that cognitive function is, the technical definition, whatever that mental process that's in that 10-year-old position, how does that show up and affect your personality? For example, if that's a feeling process, are you gonna to tend to have more of a feeling nature than if it was your three-year-old process? Or if that's a thinking, or if that's a sensory position, if that's a sensory process, let's say it's extroverted sensing is the technical definition, or sensation, what we've nicknamed here at Personality Hacker, will you show up more of like a sensor would maybe to the world because that 10-year-old's such a big part of our, our expression here? And, and also the question is, does that influence how our secondary process, that growth state that we talk about in the company all the time here at Personality Hacker, does it affect that growth state and how that growth state shows up in that secondary process? Yeah, and the answer is absolutely. Yeah, the answer is yes. So this is this is a question that is a little bit more for those of us who have gone down the rabbit hole a little further, uh, maybe the Myers-Briggs geeks. And f from our point of view, if you look at the car model, if you look at anything to the left of, uh, if you draw a line down the middle and you look at anything to the left of the line, so we're talking about the driver and the three-year-old process in that co car model for your type, we call those our unconscious processes because the driver process is what we call unconscious competence, or we're so good at it, we don't even have to think about it anymore. It's such a major part of our identity and our self-expression and what we love to do. And the three-year-old process is what we call unconscious incompetence because it's a blind spot. We don't really like it. We don't really identify with it. And when it shows up for us, it's always kind of a surprise. To the right of the line is the co-pilot process and the 10-year-old. And we call those both conscious processes for us. We have a conscious relationship with both of them. And they're much more a part of our identity including that 10-year-old. Even though the 10-year-old is still a younger part of who we are, it's not as developed, it's not as sophisticated as the driver or the co-pilot, it's still very much a part of who we see ourselves as. So we, build, we spend more time building skill in it, we spend more time thinking about its consequences in the world, and that's, that's even if we're not a person who knows anything about our type, even if we don't know anything about Myers-Briggs. If you're showing up in the world as an ENTP, Harmony, which is the 10-year-old process, which is technically called extroverted feeling, the cognitive function of extroverted feeling, you absolutely are thinking about things like approval and disapproval and whether or not you're being socially palatable and how your actions are going to impact others on an emotional level versus an INTP who has that same process in the three-year-old position. So that would be unconscious for them, unconscious incompetence, a blind spot. It's only going to show up 
in a surprised moment for them. They're probably, they're, they're a lot more likely to ignore it as a ramification. They're a lot more likely to be confused by it when it bites them in the ass. Like it's going to be a lot less on their radar than it is for an ENTP. And that's why the, your function stack is so important. That's why an ENTP and an INTP are fundamentally different creatures. The position of these processes is very influential in your type. For an INTP, the driver process is accuracy and the copilot is exploration. For an ENTP, it's the opposite. The driver's exploration and the copilot is accuracy. That totally alters the game. It totally alters the expression. Now, all NTPs that run into each other are going to be like, hey, we have some simpatico going on. You kind of think like I do. But whether or not that those positions or those cognitive functions are in the positions of driver or copilot, 10-year-old or 3-year-old, massively alters how they show up to the world. So... The answer is yes, that 10-year-old process is definitely going to be influential. An INTP whose intuitive process of exploration is the co-pilot and their sensory process of memory is the 10-year-old, they're going to show up with a lot more relationship to their sensory part. So it's going to be a bigger, you know, it's going to be a bigger um, influence in how they say gather data, how they pattern recognize, how much you know, specific pieces of information or how much infrastructure is going to influence how their patterns are developed and created. As opposed to an ENCP like me, who is my sensory process is my three-year-old. It's my unconsciously incompetent process. So I, when I'm pattern recognizing, if my, my sensing part of memory shows up, it's not really something that I'm giving much credence to. And so my pattern recognition tends to be a little bit more pie in the sky, honestly. It's going to show up more abstract. It's going to be a little less, you know, attached to how the infrastructure actually, you know, show, actually influences us in the world. It's going to be a little bit more pie in the sky, honestly. So yeah, our 10-year-old definitely influences us in a big way. It's not just for the negative. It can also be for the positive. And it really alters the structure of our type. Yeah, and that's a lot of what we are doing here at Personality Hacker. A lot of the training and the coaching and the, the teaching, the programs we do really works with that secondary process and that 10-year-old process because we feel like those are the, the two places that that can be worked with and have a f- most effect on your personality in your growth and your personal growth. Yeah, and I, and I don't think that it's necessarily, I mean, basically the question was, is an ENTP going to be more of a feeler thinker than an INTP is? The answer is yes. Is uh, an INTP going to be more of a sensory intuitive than an ENTP is? The answer is yes. So for those of you who followed that, because <laughs> we are talking about things that are a lot more down the rabbit's hole than normal, uh, the answer is absolutely our 10-year-old definitely influences us. Hey, before we wrap up this, um, this PHQ, I do want to make one comment. Okay. All right. So... Uh, I don't think Tolkien's an INFP. <laughs> and and I think the person who wrote in, she probably read that someplace online. Celebrity type guesses online and, and, and type guesses. One of, you may have noticed this on Personality Hacker, but we don't really do this very often. We don't actually talk about celebrity types very often at all. One of the reasons why we don't is, number one, you end up in a lot of like battles about whether or not a certain celebrity is a certain personality type and you quibble about, oh, no, I totally think they were this type. No, I think they were that type. And it feels like a big fat waste of time, honestly. But the second thing is oftentimes we don't really know for sure unless we have definitively talked to the person. So a lot of the type guesses that we make are either ones that we held off on for a long time and then after a lot of study, a lot of watching of interviews, you know, a lot of um, uh, really kind of going, they can't be any other type, then we'll reveal what we think a person's type is. There's been a couple of celebrities that I've had the privilege of being able to profile directly. And so I use them as type, you know, my, my type uh, examples all the time because I've actually physically, pro- I mean, like I literally sat down and profiled them. So I've had the pleasure of being able to do that a couple times. And so Tolkien is a tough one because Tolkien was dead by the time I got into profiling. <laughs> so it was not really something that I could, I couldn't sit down with Tolkien. But that said, I did have the privilege of talking to George R. R. Martin a couple times. And Martin, who is the very famous now celebrity writer of the Game of Thrones series of books, they were actually called the Song of Ice and Fire books. And the first book is called Game of Thrones. And Martin is an INFP. Uh, Martin is a very interesting character. And if you've read his books and if you've read Tolkien, you can see that there's a massive difference in their style of writing. For Martin, he, yeah, he has a very well-architected world. 
But you can totally see that it's the characters that drive his books. The character development, what's happening in their personal lives, the fact that he has so many different point of view characters for each book. You can tell that for him, each person is the hero of their own story. And that's very evident in his writing style and, and basically how he, how he writes in all ways. I mean, he, he does things like he has to have a very specific word processing machine in front of him in a very specific place in order to write. He is an artist in the, in the, you know, in the grand definition of the world. Word. Tolkien, on the other hand, he, it was almost like his characters were a, a backdrop to be able to explore, uh, you know, a, a world he had architected. His characters are very two-dimensional. They're very lovable, right? Like, they're, obviously, they're classic characters, but they're really two-dimensional. And this, the characters in the story give Tolkien an opportunity to express this world that he has architected in his mind. And it feels more like an INTJ style of writing. It feels a lot more like somebody who created just this gorgeous landscape of a world and then wanted to be able to tell stories within the world. So you can really tell that the focus of the writing is very different. So just by sort of elimination, I would say that Tolkien is most likely not an INFP. I would say that he's more likely to be an INTJ. And uh, and that's because I'm contrasting him with George R. R. Martin, who I did have the privilege of being able to talk to and profile, and he is definitely, definitively INFP. Well, and they both have created similar types of, of worlds and, you know, uh, franchises, let's say, of storytelling. So you can kind of see the comparison and contrasting how these two types would show up to it. So any more questions for PHQ, questions from the community here at Personality Hacker, you can find us online at personalityhacker.com, also on facebook.com forward slash personality hacker, twitter.com forward slash personality hack. And if you have any questions, please shoot us an email at info at personalityhacker.com and put PHQ in the subject line. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And we'll talk to you on the next PHQ. (laughs) 